Admiral Broadway Review, brought to you by your Admiral dealer, the man to see for Admiral dual temp refrigerators, Admiral electric ranges, Admiral radios, phonographs, and magic mirror television. It's the Admiral Broadway Review, this time of year. This week, with a happy blend of song, dance, and comedy, shows you what's happening this time of year. Is it Jerry, Terry, Gary, Gary? 
Madam. Oh, oh, there you are. Uh, what can I do for you, madam? Well, I'm looking for a book, but I'm in quite a hurry, though. I've got to get to the butcher shop before it closes. I see. What's the title of your book, madam? Well, I'm not quite sure. It has something red in the title. Red. Something like uh, The Scarlet Symphony. Uh, it's about music, then, eh? Oh, no, no, no. It's a novel. It's about a man and a woman. Now, the man is some sort of a doctor, or maybe a painter. Anyway, he dies in the end. Oh, I think I know the one you mean. Yes, yes, of course. It's called the Scarlet Plantation. Only it's about a dentist who goes to South America. Oh, yes, that sounds like the one. That's the one? Yes. I'll get a few of this, madam. Thank you. I'll just look to make sure. Uh, oh, no, this isn't the one. Not the one? I remember now. It takes place in England, and the man is a young member of Parliament, and he gets involved in some sort of a scam. Oh, I know the one you mean. Yes, of course. It's called uh, the Red Letter. Yes. And it's about, uh, it's not about a member of Parliament. It's about a sailor who goes to sea, oh, and he meets yes. this girl. And, uh, that sounds like it. That's it? Uh-huh. Well, uh, <laughs> I'll get it for you in just a moment, Thank Yes, indeed, I will. Charles Thomas. <laughs> Madam, you're sure the story takes place in England? Well, now that you mention it, I'm not exactly sure. 
The story has lots of different places in it. Once he goes to China, or maybe it was India. Anyway, he travels quite a lot. I think I know the one you mean. Yes, it's called The Crimson Robe. Oh, The Crimson Robe. Yes, Rose. it's about a nurse who travels because she's a nurse. Oh, yes. Didn't I tell you it had something to do with doctors in it? Yes, you That's did. That's it, absolutely <laughs> definitely. Yes. Yes, the Crimson Rose. That's it, I'm sure. There you are. That's it. <laughs> there you are, Madam. Crimson Rose. What page would you like? Put it in. George, portrait of Jenny. Yeah. <laughs> Got a nice frame, too. I'm in quite a hurry, you know. Yes, madam, I shall have the book for you immediately. Madam, uh, you're sure it's not uh, the flame? No. I can't see what you're saying. No! <laughs> Couldn't be Red Knight? No, of course not. Uh, how about uh, Blood in the Night? No. Uh, how about Marooned on an Island? Here you are, madam. Oh, thank you. I'll, I'll just look to make sure. Yes, I did. Oh, no. Yeah, yeah. The one. Oh, and I'm such a hurry to get to the butcher's, too. Yes. I just know it has something red in the title. Well, think, madam. I... I've got it. It's called The Stories I Have Read. Read, you know, a collection of stories. <laughs> Sorry. I'll have to be a moment, Doc. This one will go upstairs and have you run with you. The stories I have read. Yes, the stories I have read. <laughs> there you are, madam. About 20 pounds, I think. Would you like about up to here? <laughs> I'll shave down. And... All right, madam, would you have, would you like to take it with you or should I wrap it for you? Or should you like to go with a moving van or something? I'll take it with me and would you mind wrapping it as a gift? Yes, please? madam, of course. Now, I've got to call my husband and let him know that I found the book. May I use your phone, please? Of course, madam. Yes. Thank you. I just called to tell you that I got the book and I'm on my way to the butcher's. What is it, dear? You don't want it. Well, are you sure? Oh, you're not staying in tonight. Oh, I see. Well, you know, since I'm here, it seems like you stay not to bring it to me. Well, all right, dear, be sure. All right, if you don't want it, I will find it. Well, goodbye, dear. I don't want to say it. 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 My husband doesn't want hamburger for dinner. Ah! Ladies and gentlemen, this time of the year, the entertainment world begins to feature the little people, those fabulous, amazing characters made of wood and paint, the puppets. The Admiral Broadway Review falling in step with the spirit of the season, takes great pleasure at this time in presenting the world-famous Salisi puppets who will be appearing soon at the Radio City Music Hall for their annual Easter holiday show. And here they are now, the Salisi puppets.
performance. I had the audience in the palm of my hand. Shall I put the flowers in champagne, Madame Gary? Oh, no, Matilda. I want to keep them close to my heart as a sweet remembrance of the greatest operatic event in metropolitan history. Tell me, Matilda, who is the greatest carman in the world? Madame Galley. And who is the greatest Traviata? Madame Galley. Who is the greatest Aida? Madame Galley. And who is the greatest Madame Galley? Madame Galley. <laughs> You're an intelligent girl, Matilda. You may go now. What a night, what a night. Brilliant, true. Ah, oh, but how well I recall my first triumph when I auditioned for Lawrence Tibbet. When I sing for him, he break down and cry. Ah, oh, how well I remember his words on that occasion. He say, to make a sinner, takes five years. To make a baritone, takes ten years. To make a soprano, and now I shall sing for you. <laughs> My greatest aria, the mad scene from Lucia de Lammermoor. In this aria, Lucia goes crazy. Very cute aria. <laughs> But finally, I dazzled him. Die, I, I, What an aria! What an opera! Let me tell you about it. In the first act, Siegfried is in love with Brunhilde, but she doesn't love him, and she goes away, and he goes searching for her. <laughs> not in love with her. So he goes away and she goes searching for him. Hey, Siggy! <laughs> now in the third act, Siegfried is in love with Brunhilde and Brunhilde is in love with Siegfried. So they don't search for each other. Which is why I sing my most beautiful aria, the bist mein Herzen Liebe in the Scheiden of the old apple tree. <laughs> Martinelli. Also one foreigner, Edward Johnson. <laughs> and now, and now I shall sing for you my greatest aria, the bell song from Lock Me.
Are you for real? Saludos, amigos, amigas, tortillas, Morocco. Solid, Jackson. Cayendo con el señor, llegué a casa de la señora, eh? Hi, you touch, you're really living, huh? <laughs> You see, Americans flee with fugitive civil society. No tie, no hat, no socks, no, no putting, putting on, on the door. Who cares about the latest style? No visitors disturb our little tropical Except when they come to make our people travel on. And I come from 2,685 Boulevard, Spacious and Fire, Chicago. To Bogo, Bogo, if you want to go, don't be a schmogo. Go, 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 go. Go, 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 go. go, go, go. Distinction, I'll switch here from papaya to coconut milk. Not like in Hoboken or back in Shemokin. And I come from 2,685 Michigan Boulevard, Chicago. And I come from 2,685 Michigan Boulevard, Chicago. Emma you know how to get there? No, I don't. All you do is get a subway, ride the three stations, get out, walk two blocks, turn to the left, walk three blocks to the right. You'll find a police for that, Taylor, you'll tell you where to go. Go! Life is one big fiesta, one long holiday spree. Oh, how I love to see Esther, but Esther don't love to see me. Oh, I come from Hoboken, I come from Shemokan. And I come from 2,685 Michigan Boulevard, Chicago. Once in a while, in dreaming up new dances for the Admiral show, Marge and I find it's kind of fun to reach back into another era, another time. And in so doing, 
we discover that there are a lot of things that you have to think of in recreating that era. You take, for example, this costume. Well, this is hardly of 1949. You add to it an old and very battered pair of yellow cotton gloves, put them on very slowly, and finally, the inevitable straw hat. And then all you need to complete the picture is a girl and a song. And as for the song, well, I like an old-fashioned tune with words that rhyme with moon and June and spoon. An old-fashioned tune. I like to hear old songs of love use words like turtle dove cause it rhymes with stars above and the girl I love I find a song of simple rhyme when played in soft shoe time takes me back to days that were sublime just for the very purpose of singing an old-fashioned tune to a girl I'd honeymoon if she could croon an old-fashioned tune in June neath the moon harvest moon honeymoon in Rangoon Brigadoon End it soon. What a boon. Balloon. Bassoon. Dragoon. Cocoon. Saloon. Harpoon. Tycoon. Lampoon. Raccoon. Buffoon. Dragoon. Macaroon. Spittoon. very well lately. <laughs> I think I have a fever. I think that I have chills. I see square spots before my eyes, and all I eat is pills. My heart beats fast. My pulse beats slow. I cough too much. My blood counts slow. I quiver and I shiver and I frown. The doctor said my liver's upside down. I'm not long for this world as you can see, but I never complain. Not me. Fever? Ooh. 
Roger Wilco, over. <laughs> I know what I'll do. I'll call Grace. She's been sick in the hospital for weeks. Poor dear. <laughs> Hello. May I please speak to Mrs. Edna Edwards? She's a very sick patient. Mm. Hello. Edna? This is Mary. Mm-hmm. Well, I ain't been so very well lately. Mm-mm. I don't know what it is, honey. Just everything's piled up on me. I don't think I'm long for this world, dear. No. Listen, the reason I called you up is that I saw Louise the other day. Uh-huh. She said she was in to see you. She said you looked just like death. <laughs> she said she talked to your doctor. He didn't think you'd get through the night. Uh-uh. You know, Edna, by now you should begin to look better. You really should, you know. You should show some time or some kind of improvement of some way. But I always say, when it's your time to go, you just go and that's it. <laughs> yeah, well, there's nothing you can do about it, honey. Just believe it's for the best, I always say. Listen, honey, how's Harry? Uh-huh. How are the kids? That's good. Who takes care of them when he goes out at night? <laughs> huh? Yeah, I saw him the other night. He was at a nightclub with a lovely blonde. They're having a wonderful time. What? No, she didn't look a thing like you. She was young and full of life, you know, here for a long time. Yeah. What? Oh, now look, Edna, don't get hysterical. Now don't cry. Edna, pull yourself together. Oh, well, now look, I know you're a doctor. You're going to be all right. Sure you are. Why, he saved my life once. He really did. I was dying. They called him and they couldn't get him. <laughs> yeah. Well, look now, honey, if you're ever blue, you know who to call. That's right, darling. I'll always be here to cheer you up. All right. Bye-bye, darling. Nothing like bringing a smile to one who really needs it. That must be my package from the drugstore. <clears throat> <sighs> <sighs> Mrs. Jones? Uh, yes. Hey, lady, are you feeling all right? Well, I... I ain't been so very well lately. Well, here, lady, I hope this makes you feel better. Oh, oh, thank you, you dear, kind boy. Thank you so much. I've been waiting for this for days now. My 35-way cold tablet. Isn't that wonderful? I have such a hard time swallowing pills. I'll just put it between something so I can get it down. A little ham or cheese or something like that. Mmm, wonderful. <laughs> hello. Oh, hello, Daddy. Huh? No, baby doesn't feel so very well. I don't know what it is. I, I just can't hold a thing on my tum tum. Mm -mm. Huh? Oh, I'm running short of breath. I'm falling. I'm falling to the floor. Now, it's just one of those awful spells I have whenever you're not around. Mm-hmm. Huh? You gonna send the doctor over? Well, right away? Well, all right, Daddy. All right, Snookums, I'll be here. Ta-ta. I'll just have to get ready for the doctor right away. He'll be here in a minute. It's gotta help some. That must be the doctor now. On <laughs> trial. All right, you keep quiet.
quiet, this will be painless. Oh, you're so good to me. Okay, where is it? Well, I, I think it's in my stomach. Oh, yeah? Hey, I wasn't expecting this. Hey. Oh, you can tell me the truth. You, you don't have to be afraid. I'll relieve you of it immediately. Oh. Hey, here's something else. Oh, no. Oh, hey, I'm going to have to blast. Blast? Thank you. <laughs> Aren't you? Yeah, I'm on the run. I had to bury my last job underground. <laughs> Take it easy, lady. Take it easy. Well, wouldn't you like to take my pulse? I don't know. How much is it worth? <laughs> I'm gonna have to cut into this. Oh. Relax, relax. <laughs> Get a load of them rocks. I never see some stones at all. Just hope you're insured. Now listen, keep your hands up, your mouth shut, and keep laughing. <laughs> keep laughing. <laughs> keep on laughing. <laughs> keep laughing. <laughs> Laugh it up. Keep laughing. <laughs> keep laughing. time of year, a man's fancy turns to thoughts of love and courting. Well, I've just finished some research on that subject. It was called Romance Through the Ages. Now, courting a girl, as we know it today, is pretty much of a set routine. You call up the girl, make a date, try to dine at a romantic restaurant, then the theater, and so forth. But did you ever wonder how this set procedure of taking a girl out started? Well, let us start at the beginning. Let us turn the clock of eternity back, back thousands, yes, millions of years. And we come to the era of the caveman. Now, the caveman at this time was only a slightly higher form of animal, and like other animals, he had his mating call. So when he saw a cave girl that attracted him, he caught her, but in his own way. Time, one million B.C. The place, somewhere on Earth. I'm always listening to her. Honey! I can see. I can find it. There's a problem that I can see that I like. And the noise of the guy Huh? Yeah, huh? Yeah. 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 Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. But now, now as time goes on, man becomes more civilized. His stone axe becomes a steel sword. His crude picture carvings on cave walls become beautiful bronze statues in great marble palaces. The man of this era does his courting in a much finer and more amorous manner. The time, 400 BC. The place, a public slave market in Egypt. <laughs> Now, now we come to a great chivalrous era, an era of knights in shining armor who fought pitched battles for their lady's honor. Courting in these days consisted of the knight carrying with him wherever he went some little token of love given to him by his lady love. Time, 1200 AD. The place, a castle courtyard in England. What oh, fair lady? Could it be not mine that I should save off my love in all Britain and Italy and Rangland and all flies? Shall I tear forth my love and my love could I and go and tear from Brittany and Charles and Charles? <laughs> Nay! Nay, for it be not more than I should say in Cranston. In Stilson, they didn't pay for that in any port of Brighton kingdoms. 
Nay, it shall not be. Yea, oh, and you. Can it be not one thing, one thing, fair lady, to carry into battle? Oh, thank you. Thank you, fair lady. Her left ear. <laughs> now, now we come to a great plush era. An era of industrial umpires, of railroads that span continents, and great ladies of the theater that dined in sumptuous restaurants and given fabulous gifts by their courtiers, the industrial barons. The time, 1890 AD. The place, Delmonico's restaurant, New York. Bring in the oysters. Mistake now. Bring the bag. Lillian, I love you. Like Bring in the waist. The laps. The laps with the laps with the sock. Put the bags and put the bag. I love you, Lillian. Lillian, here's the diamond. Bring in the bring in the the quail. Put down the champagne. Pour the heaven drink. Diane, Lillian, I love you. Here's a diamond studded diamond. Now, now. Now we come to the pinnacle in the art of courting. The man of this era has created such things as splitting the atom, the wonder drug penicillin, speeds of 1,700 miles per hour. This intellectual giant does his courting in this manner. The time, 1949 A.D., the place, Brooklyn. Honey! Hey, listen, man, God damn it. Yeah. 
we hope we made a little bit of Broadway soon. Right over the footlights and into your room. The last parole dealer extends a fond invitation to his friends. Be back again next Friday when the admiral will show time. We'll rip up in no time a brand new review. Till when goodbye and your goodbye is admiral on the top of the evening to you. Be with us again, same time, same channel next Friday night when your Admiral dealer, the man to see for dual temp refrigerators, electric ranges, radios, record players, and magic mirror television, brings you another star-studded Admiral Broadway review. Madam. Oh, there you are. Well, what can I do for you, madam? Well, I'm looking for a book, but I'm in quite a hurry, though. I've got to get to the butcher shop before it closes. I see. What's the title of your book, madam? Well, I'm not quite sure. It has something red in the title. Red. Something like uh, the Scarlet Symphony. Well, it's about music, then, eh? Oh, no, no, no. It's a novel. It's about a man and a woman. Now, the man is some sort of a doctor, or maybe a painter. Anyway, he dies in the end. Oh, I think I know the one you mean. Yes, yes, of course. It's called the Scarlet Plantation. Only it's about a dentist who goes to South America. Oh, yes, that sounds like the one. That's the one? Yes. I'll get a few of this, madam. <laughs> there you are, 
about it. Let's call it that thing. Thank you. I'll just look to make sure. Uh, oh, no, this isn't the one. Not the one? I remember now. It takes place in England. And the man is a young member of Parliament, and he gets involved in some sort of a scam. Oh, I know the one you mean. Yes, of course. It's called uh, the Red Letter. Yes. And it's about, uh, it's not about a member of Parliament. It's about a sailor who goes to sea. Oh, and he yes. meets this girl. And, uh, that sounds like it. That's it? Uh-huh. I'll, uh, <laughs> I'll get it for you in just a moment, Thank Yes, indeed, I
have the audience in the palm of my hand. Shall I put the flowers in champagne, Madam Gary? Oh, no, Matilda. I want to keep them close to my heart as a sweet remembrance of the greatest operatic event in metropolitan history. Tell me, Matilda, who is the greatest carman in the world? Madam Galley. And who is the greatest Traviata? Madam Galley. Who is the greatest Aida? Madam Galley. And who is the greatest Madam Galley? Madam Galley. <laughs> You're an intelligent girl, Matilda. You may go now. What a night, what a night. Brilliant, true. Ah, but how well I recall my first triumph when I auditioned for Lawrence Tibbet. When I sing for him, he break down and cry. Ah, oh, how well I remember his words on that occasion. He say, to make a tenor, takes five years. To make a baritone, takes ten years. To make a soprano, and now I shall sing for you. <laughs> My greatest aria, the mad scene from Lucia de Lammermoor. In this aria, Lucia goes crazy. Very cute aria. <laughs> But finally, I dazzled him. Die, I, up, die, I, up. What an aria. What an opera. Let me tell you about it. In the first act, Siegfried is in love with Brunhilde. But she doesn't love him. And she goes away. And he goes searching for her. <laughs> love with Siegfried, but he is not in love with her. So he goes away, and she goes searching for him. <laughs> hey, Siggy! <laughs> now, in the third act, Siegfried is in love with Brunhilde, and Brunhilde is in love with Siegfried, so they don't search for each other. Which is why I sing my most beautiful aria, the bist mein Herz und Liebe in the Scheiden of the old apple tree. <laughs> Martinelli, also one foreigner, Edward Johnson. <laughs> and now, and now I shall sing for you my greatest aria, the bell song from Lockmeet.
part of the book anyway. <laughs> there you are, madam. The re it's the wrong book, I thought. Wait a minute. The story I'm looking for, the man in it, is called something like uh, John or Charles or Thomas. John Charles Thomas. <laughs> madam, you're sure the story takes place in England? Well, now that you mention it, I'm not exactly sure. The story has lots of different places in it. Once he goes to China, or maybe it was India. Anyway, he travels quite a lot. I think I know the one you mean, yes. It's called The Crimson Row. Oh, The Crimson yes. Row. Yes, it's about a nurse who travels because she's a nurse. Oh, yes. Didn't I tell you it had something to do with doctors in it? Yes, you That's did. That's it, absolutely <laughs> definite. Yes. <laughs> Yes, the Crimson Road. That's it, I'm sure. There you are. That's it. <laughs> there you see. There you are, madam. Crimson Rose. What page would you like? For the... George, portrait of Jenny. Yeah. <laughs> Got a nice frame, too. I'm in quite a hurry, you know. Yes, madam, I shall have the book for you immediately. Madam, uh, you're sure it's not uh, the flame? No. I can't see what you're saying. No! <laughs> Couldn't be Red Knight? No, of course not. Uh, how about uh, Blood in the Night? No. Uh, how about Marooned on an Island? Here you are, madam. Oh, thank you. I'll, I'll just look to make sure. Yes, I do. Oh, no. Yeah, That's yeah. the one. Oh, and I'm in such a hurry to get to the butcher's, too. Yeah. I just know it has something red in the title. Well, think, madam. I... I've got it. It's called The Stories I Have Read. Read, you know, a collection of stories. <laughs> I'll have a few moments. Uh, this one will have you Stories I have read. Yes, the stories I have. Oh. <laughs> there you are, madam. About 20 pounds, I think. Would you like about up to here? I think I'd be <laughs> have shaved down. And... All right, madam, would you have, would you like to take it with you or should I wrap it for you? Or should you like to go with a moving van or something? I'll take it with me and would you mind wrapping it as a gift, Yes, please? madam, of course. Yeah, I've got to call my husband and let him know that I found the book. May I use your phone, please? Of course, madam. Yes. Thank you. that I got the book and I'm on my way to the butcher's. What is it, dear? You don't want it. Well, are you sure? Oh, you're not staying in tonight. Oh, I see. Well, you know, since I'm here, it seems like you stay not bring it to me. Well, all right, dear, for sure. All right, if you don't want it, I will find it. Well, goodbye, dear. I don't want it, Jennifer. I don't want it, Peter. I'll delete this book. I don't want it, Jennifer. What do you know? My husband doesn't want hamburger for dinner. Uh Ladies and gentlemen, this time of the year, the entertainment world begins to feature the little people, those fabulous, amazing characters made of wood and paint, the puppets. The Admiral Broadway Review, falling in step with the spirit of the season, takes great pleasure at this time in presenting the world-famous Silesi puppets who will be appearing soon at the Radio City Music Hall for their annual Easter holiday show. And here they are now, the Silesi puppets.
Admiral Broadway Review, brought to you by your Admiral dealer, the man to see for Admiral dual temp refrigerators, Admiral electric ranges, Admiral radios, phonographs, and magic mirror television. It's the Admiral Broadway Review, this time of year. Broadway Review, this week with a happy blend of song, dance, and comedy, shows you what's happening this time of year. Phil. 